Okay. So prepare yourself. This is a new one here. I hope you looked over it. Actually, I think I posted an old one, an old uh, last March, last April COVID edition. I made a video and I put that up for y'all, I think. Friday or third, third or something like that. This is I find very evil. Okay, this is a very evil, evil chapter. Especially if you don't understand a little bit of chemistry. Okay, let's put down the left there. That's not everybody's cup of tea. Okay, now the good news is it's not this. Well, this is actually got more than just energy, so it is kind of long. But the, the hard part is not that long. It's just very complicated. Okay, to understand it. All right, so let's dive into it. So we can get, I've got some, I did dig up some old handouts for some of my old, uh, old notes from other classes. Now, all this is the same, no matter which class you take. But if you end up continuing your education, y'all may decide to go to welding today. Okay. But if you stay in, and you stay in biology or something related to medical, guess what you're going to do in microbiology? Go over all of this again. Guess what you're going to do in major biology? Go over all of this again. Guess what you're going to do? Uh, if you go to medical school, we will go over all this again. Okay, whatever. So this is one of those like the most poor things. It's kind of evil. And I think it really probably would have been better if it had been the chapter after chemistry, right? Because this probably is this probably in a regular year when you used to use old book, but this was the fourth chapter, we'd lose about 10 to 20 percent of class after this chapter. This would be one of that dividing line where you know, like, hey, you know, cosmetologists will do really good. You know, and you can make a lot of money. Don't you know, I got a friend of mine made. Six thousand dollars a year being a hairdresser slash counselor, marriage counselor. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you know, they got to be very so funny. What's going on? He's a loser. All that stuff. You really have the other three. We'll find out what's going on. Call the hairdresser in the local community, right? Actually, you know that, right? She knows everything. So, um, all right. So, we looked at this, kind of, we'll just kind of go through it. But what we're talking about is energy, and energy content in food is, is measured in calories. Okay, now here's one of the craziest things about this. A calorie is the amount of energy needed to raise one gram of water one degree centigrade. Okay, so that's actually the definition of a calorie. Amount of energy needed to raise one gram of water, which I, by the way, would be one milliliter, one degree centigrade. So all of our food labels actually are kilocalories. Okay, so if you look at a Coca Cola, it says it's 220 calories per can. That's really 220,000 calories. Can you imagine White Watchers? You know, because that I means White Watchers, you want to do a diet of about 1,500 calories a week, right? A day or whatever it is, a day, a day, it's a day, that's two in a week, a day, okay? And that's really 1.5 million calories. I just see everybody following a core of the White Watchers right now, right? Okay. So we are, we require lots of energy to keep things going. So most all of our food is measured in kilocalories, okay? All right. And so metabolism then is a series of reactions that are going to explain how we harvest the energy in sugar, okay? So that's the main thing. So we're going to take sugar. Matter of fact, and I love that it's like Miss Nickens has taken all the, the pens and taken her office or whoever's in here. We got and she's I'm sorry I see like I'm picking on Miss Nickens, but she's a collector. If I need a pen, I usually go to her office and there's plenty of pens. Okay. So she has two pens with this one, and they're all gone today. So here's the equation. I'm gonna try to scribble it with my finger. C6 H12O6 plus six oxygens. That's six oxygens yields 30. Uh, Get my story straight. Six carbon oxides, six waters, and 36 to 38 ATP. Okay. So that is the equation for say respiration. Sugar, C6, H12O6, plus six oxygen molecule yields six carbon oxides, six waters. That's pretty bad. That's six H2O. That is really, really bad. And I, I, my nails are need to be a little longer. Okay. Six H2Os, and we can produce 36 to 38 ATP. Now that is actually theoretical in yield, okay? And when we got down to it in the last 10, 15 years, they tried to do that in the laboratory and no one's ever measured more than 30. So it's kind of like, how many of y'all, well, y'all gonna do this in your life? Are you gonna buy a car and it's gonna have on the sticker how many miles per hour you can get? You ain't never gonna see that, okay? Just forget it, okay? So it says 30, you'll get 25, you know what I'm saying? Because you probably, when I found out over all these years, I'm just a really aggressive driver. Because I mean, whatever I get, I mean, I just throw horses, right? So I just burn that gas. I just throw it, I just shoot through. I'm just telling you, I, I don't like pokey. Okay, but anyway, uh, here we go. So that's what we're going to do. There's power in the bonds of sugar. And, when that, and where does all these carbons going to end up? In that carbon dioxide that we breathe out. So remember, oxygen in, break sugar down, waste carbon dioxide. That's low energy. That's a waste product of, say, respiration. 
Okay, so we're going to take that energy and the power of those bonds and use it to make ATP. And so ATP is the universal currency of life on Earth. I think it's very fascinating. Every living thing uses ATP. That would be like everybody on Earth using uh, English as their language and only use the American dead president as currency, right? I imagine that. So this is the currency for cellular work, okay? Pretty wild. Reactions can build things up. Some can turn that catabolism. Catastrophe means to break down, right? And anabolism means to build up. And here are the three things we get energy from. We like the cells of the brain prefer sugar, but we, we love that as the main food of choice of the body. We can also take fats and break them down into fatty acids and glycerol that can then be breaking down into sugar metabolites. And we get energy from fat. And the 20 amino acids can be converted into molecules that can be broken down in these reactions like we studied today. Okay. So basically, we take proteins and fats and convert them into things that fit into our master metabolism of sugar. So the key is sugar metabolism on planet Earth. Then we, those building blocks, you are what you eat. Then we take these building blocks, these raw materials. Remember, proteins are made out of amino acids, right? Sugars are made out of what? Simple sugars. Fats are made out of fatty acids and, 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 and glycerol, or sugar, and little sugar rings. And we use that to build our body. So we're mainly proteins and lipids. We don't have a whole lot of sugar structure. Plants do, right? There's wood and stuff, but we don't do a lot of sugar structural material. But we use, you are what you eat. We use these nutrients to build your body. All right, so getting all down to it. So we want to look at this, this breakdown of energy, how we how we break sugar down. Okay, and I did, I think I can put this on the video. So I actually got a little bit into chapter three on uh, on uh, last Wednesday. But y'all, I think we kind of did this is review check. Yeah, see, Monday just sounded like I invited Monday. See how many came today. Okay, this is working. This once a week thing is not working right. I'm not really worried about times a week. But anyway, uh, first of all, third writer says what you can never create or destroy energy, right? You can simply what convert it in different forms. The second law said everything is in what? Entropy, maximum disorder, right? And that's the law. Anytime we have energy transfer, you lose some of the energy as heat, right? We went over these last Wednesday. I remember that when we had all that. So first law. Energy cannot be created or stored. You can only change things from one point to another. Second law says anytime you have energy transfer, you lose some of that to heat. And it's also called the law of entropy. So everything's going to hell in a handbasket, right? Everything's falling apart. Your, your body will eventually fall apart to natural elements and some other plant we use. Okay, so another organism we use. So here we are. ATP is converted into ADP, takes a phosphate, put it on it, and becomes ATP. And then that phosphate is released. We, we phosphorylate somebody, therefore we transfer energy to them, and that's how it work gets done in the cell. So by adding that phosphate, there's energy on that bond, and that bond is broken to do work. Okay, so everything you do requires ATP. Yes, ma'am. And what? In the drug reactions are those that require energy, like building sugar, okay? Photosynthesis requires energy. Extra drug reactions are those who release energy. So say respiration is going to what? Extra drug, very good, because this is going to make 30, 35 ATP. So lighting a fire, water fire, an uh, engine, crank, cranking your car is all extra germ. And that's why the engine gets hot. Because remember, anytime you have energy transfer, you produce heat. So it kind of makes sense once you see the big picture, right? It does. It makes a lot of sense. And I didn't see this the first time. Let me see it straight up. Probably about my fifth class in grad school when it finally, because I'm a little slow. I'm a little slower than most of probably all y'all. So it took me a little while to get that to, to kick in. But once I saw that, then it became something real beautiful to me, right? It's one of my favorite things is seeing this big picture. So yes, we get down to this a very good point. So exergenic releases energy, energetic, and so really the opposite of that first equation is photosynthesis, right? For sunlight is, is, is put into a reaction to build through it. That's endoderm. Okay, but good. Well, thank you, Ashton. Some kind of weird term, the term the verbiage can drive you crazy in this thing, right? Because nobody got up talking about these things we're gonna talk about today. So metabolic reactions are going to be a sequence of events, reactions one after another that's going to break that sugar down and release energy that can be used to make ATP. We talked about efficiency, right? That equation that I drew a while ago is about 39 percent efficient. The only car in the Northwest parking lot today that's that efficient is a hybrid. Okay, if you're driving a hybrid. I don't think anybody has an electric car in Northwest, right? Anybody have a Tesla? I didn't think so. I say something, but it's coming, right? They're really coming. There's a big forward. Ford, you know, one of the biggest three, four more interactive cars, they're going to go all electric in 10 years. So most likely, your children will never drive in a combustion, will never go by gas. Imagine that. All y'all probably done that, right? They'll go charge their batteries, okay? That's where, it's where we're headed to, okay? But anyway, but the reason they're doing that is because electric is a lot more efficient, supposedly, okay? But, but that electricity is also going to be made, right? And so how do we make electricity? Well, we burn fossil fuel. So it's kind of a circle 
This seems kind of stupid to me. Uh, maybe I, I'm not sure about the efficiency of that overall. Okay, so we take nutrients, break it down, and make that ATP, and then we have the building blocks to do things with. Okay, we already mentioned ATP, the main currency of life, of energy transfer and sales, right? It's not a high energy body. It's, it's sometimes it's called high energy. I agree with her. That's misnamed. It's not high energy. It's just the right amount. So like all of our electronics work off double A batteries, right? Nobody, nobody buys a three and a half battery, right? Or you know, you know, nine volt battery. You know, nobody sells a seven volt battery. It's just the voltage that God made all of our cell our machinery work off of is units of ATP. So all of our reactions need ATP, the ones that require to do work. Okay, and that amount is just really important. And that phosphorus by transfer is releasing it. So when you phosphorate somebody, you donate a phosphate to them, therefore you give them energy to do a good job. Now, here's a term, another one, and Ashton, please jump in there, but I appreciate that. There's something that's a term that makes sense. Here's another term that's going to blow y'all mind. I'm going to take some kind of MCAT, ACT one day, and they're going to throw this term out here, oxygen reduction, and what's the practice? What's the practice they talking about? Okay, well, all of what I'm showing you today, this, this whole uh, state of respiration, you know, these five reactions I mentioned, remember glycolysis, you know, crowd cycle, electron transport chain, all this. Anytime you have molecules that gain and lose electrons, you have oxidative reduction reactions. So what we're going to do is, it's all about electrons. And so the sugar molecule is broken down and electrons are taken off of it. So if you lose electrons, you're oxidized. If you gain electrons, you're reduced. Now I know that goes against everything we know about our culture today. So if Robin were, Robin needs to go and die, that means I need to what? Reduce my weight. That's not what's going to happen. For me to reduce weight, I need to oxidize lots of energy, right? And release energy, right? Stored in my stomach, my fat. So reduction is to build up. Oxidation is to tear down. It's kind of weird. So oxidation would be an extra dark reaction, using your action phrases. And then say respiration, or our photosynthesis would be a reduction reaction when you build sugar up bigger molecules. So when you're making bigger molecules, you're doing reduction. Reduction means to gain electrons, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to have some molecules to transfer these electrons. Okay, and we're going to see that in a second. I, I don't know why she put that in there. Just chemical reactions, you can do that. Okay. So oxidation means to lose, reduction means to gain. That's important. So here is our molecule that's really important. Okay. So nice and adding that nutrient. I actually hired somebody over there. I made them. Uh, we usually make teachers look like I went down making hire a teacher to do this summer. And so one of the things I make them do is I make them do this lecture. So this is one that kind of separates them the, the losers from the winners, right? And I had a kid, a young person coming here who I did not hire with the fact that they didn't know what they deal with. But they were reading all this PowerPoint, they didn't know. I mean, I didn't care if they didn't know it's not seen that needs I need to I wouldn't know what it did. They didn't know. But they didn't know that they didn't know the energy. And so NAD is a what's called a cofactor or coenzyme. And if you remember, you know, vitamins. Our molecules that we have to have in our diet for our cells or enzymes to work properly. Well, niacin, the vitamin niacin, is the vitamin that binds to these compounds and forms NAD. NAD is the main energy transfer molecule in your body that takes these electrons from glycolysis, the transition reaction, the Krebs cycle, and carries them to the electron transport chain. Okay? And so they are really, I, I, when I see these guys, I think about uh, like somebody that works for the gas company, fills their tank up, goes and delivers gas to everybody, then they go back and get what? More gas. And that's what they do in your body. They just go and carry electrons back and forth. Okay. Now, at this point, before we dive into these, I want to give you a couple of handouts. Okay. And this is actually a pretty good one here. First, I actually, I think I've got a really good one here. It's sitting outside the back. Some of these, these are some old ones. I, was in. I had something that came up this morning. I didn't get that. Spend as much time as I want to. Let me make sure I give you a quick side of I'll grab that for you. Make sure I get to this front of that. So, this side right here that says view. There's a summary of everything. And on the back is electron transport chain, which kind of throws people off sometimes. So anyway, this is a great little review. So you know, this is out of another book, a little simpler book, and they just summarize things. And I thought, hey, let's get to get somebody to look at it, right? And we're going over this. So where I'm at, we're going to we're going to dive in right here, which is like out. But can you see in ADH? You see those in ADs? See them carrying stuff to the oxidation, phosphorylation, make sure that's what they're making. That is what NAD does. NAD carries electrons from glycolysis, the citric acid cycle, also called the Krebs cycle, and carry these electrons over to the oxidative reduction. This kind of helped me out after a while. I got another one here. 
I have a couple of handouts today. I think I have another one. Maybe that would be it. Curious how many more If I have those questions, I think I'll give them y'all last week. Actually, I have another one here. Maybe I've got enough to do some conversation. So we don't have that. All right, so we'll take a look at those as we go. All right, so let's dive into it. We're going to go into it. All right, so. These are electron carrier molecules that carry electrons for us between the cytoplasm, which is where the glycolysis occurs, uh, the mitochondria matrix, which is where the Krebs cycle occurs, to the electron transport chain. There's another one called FAD, which is flavin adenine dinucleotide, and it is a, it's also an electron transport molecule, and it carries a little bit lesser charge of electrons. So think about maybe uh, NAD being like a 12 volt battery and FAD being like a 9 volt. You know, they, they carry different levels of energy. Okay. All right. And so when they reduce they, but their carrying energy, they become NADH. And when they're oxidized, they're not carrying electrons, they're NAD. Okay. So this is showing you how batteries work. And they, batteries transfer electrons from the uh, zinc, which has a low affinity for electrons, to the copper, which has a high affinity. And when you run out of electrons, then the battery's dead. Kind of cool. All right. There we go. So we're going to break it down. And this is kind of going over the picture you're looking at here. So we're going to see. There's actually three, four big part, five, five reactions I want you to look at. Okay, three of them are shown here. Glycolysis is the first big one. Okay, and then we have this transition reaction that occurs here where you just one step where you take pyruvate and convert it into a silicoenzyme A. Then you have the citric acid cycle. Then you have the electron transport chain. And sometimes when you don't need a lot of energy, you can take the pyruvate, the pyruvic acid, and convert it into. Uh, 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 acetate and carbon dioxide and alcohol and fermentation is when you make a little bit more energy out of the out of after glycolysis and you basically just recycle in AD, put them in. But it's it's a it's a anaerobic meaning doesn't require oxygen metabolism that has a low yield, it's very low yield, four ATP, something like that. Okay, very low yield versus 36, 38. So we're going to take the sugar and we're going to do glycolysis. Then we're going to take it into the mitochondria and do this transition reaction. I got labeled number two in that picture. It's called preparatory reaction, I believe. Flip over there. Actually, somewhere in there, I think it's over there. And actually, actually, let me hand you the other one. You got that. And here, I'm just going to give you all this up on the floor. And here's the fermentation. And I actually been to one of these uh, wine cellars where they were fermenting. Uh, uh, Gray used to make wine, right? That's pretty cool place. You might find that interesting. If you some people would like alcohol. Let's see. I mean, I think I just put that repeat on that fermentation. You can have that fly. Okay, two million dollars for you. I think I got a repeat on the back of that. Okay. So fermentation, that's a pretty good little read on fermentation there, an alcohol fermentation, and we do lactic acid fermentation in our body. Okay, let's run through it. Okay, now, now obviously to do full say respiration, you have to have a mitochondria, right? But a lot of organisms like bacteria don't have a mitochondria, right? And they just do glycolysis and fermentation. Okay, all right, here we go. We're going to have enzymes that do every step of the way. Okay. And the first one is glycolysis. So we actually, you give, it actually requires two ATP. So you have to have the energy to make energy. So you take an ATP and you make it, and you don't need to know these intermediates. So like glucose six phosphate and enzymes that turns to fructose six phosphate. And then you add another ATP, kind of like starting a motorcycle, you have to give a little energy. And you end up with fructose one six phosphate that breaks apart into two phosphoglycerate three phosphates. And you end up with two. Look, it keeps going. Each of those then, look, NAD comes in and grabs energy and forms two NADHs, which represent what? Potential energy that can be used to make ATPs later on in the electron transport chain. And then you have enzyme, and there's 10 reactions actually that leads up with two three carbon sugars called pyruvate. So you end up with two three carbon sugars called pyruvate, and you've made what? How many ATPs have you made? I see, I see four up there, right? We made four, but it added two. You're right. But we had to put two in to a net of two. That's correct. I'm going to do a really, really cheesy 
thing to help me. Maybe this gets me. If one person sees gets a smile out of this, then maybe then this has been worth it. So every other this is really important. Every living cell we found in the universe so far does knock out. Okay. And a couple of weird bacteria, they have a little variation, but for all practical purposes, everything on Earth does that out. So this is probably the first energy producing right, reaction that evolved, right? And everybody has it. So everybody came from one, and we all come from one common cell. You know, that's, I mean, that's pretty well been proven. You know, that the DNA stuff that tells us that. So what? This, I'm going to summarize those 10 reactions. There's sugar. It's actually a range, but I just put it linear for easier to see, right? And through those 10 reactions, you what? Here's the energy being transferred in ADA. That's that energy. And you end up with two, three carbon sugars. There's your two peruvic acids. Remember the first law of thermodynamics is you cannot what? Create or destroy, you can simply what? Rearrange. You can break it down into individual atoms or you can build it back up. So there's my two peruvic acids. And so glycolysis is 10 reactions with the cytoplasm that ends up then yield of two ATPs, two. Uh, three carbon peruvic acids or peruvates, however you want to call them, and two NADHs, which represent potential energy here that can be carried to the mitochondria to electron transport chain to make a bunch. I'm going to show a video of that in just a minute. Okay, see, so there we go. They summarized it all, but we're not done. There it is, summary. 10, 10 reactions, 10 the blue lines, and there's your two peruvates and that of two ATPs. I right, took biochemical this. That was exam question number one. Guy gave us construction paper, said, draw it all. Draw all of them properly and then label all enzymes. I just handed my pen and construct the paper back and went through. Because I was looking for the scan turn on a choice question, right? It didn't happen. Okay, that didn't happen. Okay. It was a construction where you would just draw it all. You should memorize it. You don't have to, but if you do that later, you would. Now here's fermentation. Prove is reduced to lactic acid or in an alcohol in a fermentation in a wine cellar, then it's converted to alcohol and carbon dioxide, and that's what makes beer bubbly is the carbon dioxide thing to do. Okay. Uh, anyway, pretty cool. So anaerobic respiration can be, and if you're a bacteria or a yeast, a Budweiser, you can live off those two ATPs that you made. No, no ATPs are made in fermentation. You just simply recycle the NAD. And then you have a, you have a drawing of that, I think. Uh, here it is. Here it is. So here it is. So the pyruvate is converted to acetylchlorine A and NAD, the energy in NADH is put on the NAD so they can go back now and uh, grab another sugar. So this occurs not in, as I see, that's intermediate step. Here's fermentation up here. So the, the NAD gives its energy up and you convert pyruvate to lactic acid or alcohol and carbon dioxide. And that NAD then can go back over here and be used again. That's just all about recycling the NAD. The second step in the reaction is this one, sorry, is this intermediate or step where you take pyruvic acid and you convert it into two azelacoins MAs and two NADHs. <laughs> Did you hear me call your name? Uh, no, but I knew when I saw it sitting on my desk and I didn't have it this morning. And it was there, it went in there yesterday. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I love you, man. It was a good thing. I guess right. <laughs> that's funny. Well, good thing I hadn't cut my nails, right? Anyway, uh, sorry. That's funny. I thought you heard me saying that. I don't care. Okay, so anyway, so here's fermentation. A little bit easier for the thing now. But look, this second step is the three carbon pyruvate is converted into a two carbon sugar acetylcholine MA, and you make two more NADHs. Now, can anybody see what's going on here? What did I just do? What did the preparatory reaction do? Let's make it real simple. There's the pyruvic acid, right? What did we do? Pyruvic acid converted to carbon off, right? And made our first carbon dioxide. See? We're going to make six of them, right? So here's the acetylcholine MA. There's a carbon dioxide, and we had to do it twice, right? So there's two carbon dioxide, and now here's my two acetylcholine MA. Hey, this occurs where? In the mitochondria. And now we're ready to go to the next step, which is called the Krebs cycle, also called the citric acid cycle. And the name, and I know why you woke up this morning, Mama said, How's your Krebs cycle going today? I mean, it just ain't happening, right? Okay, but every cell in your body in the mitochondria, you're doing this reaction. Look at this. And this is the evil one. It is a circular metabolic pathway that you do not have to draw. Actually, there's a, when I came here, I taught lab for about six years, and one of the AMP teachers, they made the AMP teachers program, there's two people taught AMP. One of them was Richard King, my boss, and the other was a veterinarian still alive in Dakota. Uh, and he made everybody draw that on the test from black blue paper. And he was a really big fan of this one. I'm not going to make you draw it, but I do want you to know what goes in, what comes out. 
and where does it occur? Okay. All right, so here we go. Here's the first step. The silicone that make comes in. Notice two carbon binds to a four carbon sugar called oxalacetate, and you make citrate. Now, what have you heard of citrate? Citrate is the sugar in oranges. Citrate, citric acid. Okay. Citrate is converted to isocitrate. Isocitrate is converted to alpha ketoglutarate. That's converted to succinate. That's converted to succinate, to fumarate, and maltate. Malt liquor, malt ball. That's another sugar that's pretty famous. And then it reboots itself to oxalacetate. So it's a self-rebooting -re circular metabolic pathway. Pretty cool. I mean, this, if you ain't got drawing your hands on it, let's see it. Okay, now look what happens. First step, uh, we make that. And then when we make this, we make one NADH here. We make another one here. Make one actual ATP right here. Then we make another NADH. And then here's that other electron transfer molecule I call FADH. So in summary, we make what? Three. Where's that freaking pen? I can't do that. Just make it. I'll cut it off. Three NADHs, right? One FADH2, one ATP, and two carbon dioxides. Uh, where did it? They didn't draw them off here, but they're made in here. There, there, there it is. One. And where's the other one? That's on the left. I've got it covered somewhere. Here. Okay, we're up to that. It's on there somewhere. All right, PCH is at the very bottom. Yeah. Or it's like less elliptical rod inside of the circle. Ah, yeah, right there. Thank you. All right, so now that is one. Let's take one group. Take a group. Here we go. Zzz, there we go. Split the part. There's the two carbon dioxide right there. Thank you, Ashton. So we now have made what? Two more, eight, two more of these, right? Two more carbon dioxide, and we made three NADHs, one FADH2, one ATP, and two carbon dioxides and a partridge in a pear tree. On the fifth day of Christmas, I shouldn't let you be I was thinking about that song when I did this one, right? I think that helped me learn. But what's the problem? How many, how many perubate acids do we start with? We had two perubates, so we had two silicone so how many times the crop cycle got to turn? Twice. We got to run, run another one through here. We got to run it through again. And now we're going to double all this to six, two, two, and four. And here's the other two carbon dioxide. So I have made all six carbon dioxide, right? In this way. And I've made how many ATPs? Four. Two here and two in, in dialysis. So we need to get to 38 and we got four. Things are not going well for us, right? So guess what's going to happen when electron transport change? We're going to make a poop load of what? A bunch of ATPs, right? And the energy to do that is going to come from what? All these NADHs. Look at this picture right here. See those, those arrows? Those, those NADHs being carried over to the electron transport chain. See them on the middle row there? Two from glycolysis, two from the transition reaction, and six from citric acid cycle, and two, from, two FADHs, right? All those came from the trail cycle. Okay, is everybody cool with that? Pretty simple, right? On that part. Now, let's look at the next picture. So now we're going to make ATP, and the electron transport chain is on the mitochondria, and it is a set of look, four proteins, one, two, three, four, with some intermediate, and NADH comes in and gives up these electrons that they got from sugar, and those electrons are passed down the electron transport chain like a, like a hot potato, and every time the electron is transferred, it loses energy, so it gets right here, and it has very little energy left here. It grabs a hydrogen laying around and it forms water, and that's where the water is made, and there's where the oxygen is used. Oxygen is the final electron receptor in this electron transport chain. And in each of these three pumps, pump one, two, and three, hydrogens are pumped out. See all these? So we get a high level of hydrogen out here. And hydrogens then want to go from high to low in the matrix. And this is one of the keys to life on Earth. This little pump here called the ATP synthase, the green thing, allows hydrogen to go through. And when it does, it snaps the phosphate. It's like a, it's like a dead gum, a, a stapler. It snaps the phosphate on the ATP, and we make an ATP. For every three, for every NADH, we pump enough ATP, to make enough hydrogen to make three ATP. FADH misses the first pump, so you can make for every FADH. You make two electrons, you make two ATPs. So for every NADH, you get three ATPs, and for every FADH, you get two. I think we have 
have a summary here of the other map. I made this slide. There's a summary again. Show me the summary. Here we go. So we got two ATP from black houses, two NADHs, maybe what? They were made in the you know, NADHs. I can leave the six ATP. Sometimes the NADHs can't get in and give it up to FADH, and you get that, that variable. Two times, three, you can get a little bit different, you get a different number there. And then here's two interdiagents for the transition reaction, pruvate oxidation, whatever I call it, transition reaction. Then we made two and citric gas cycle, and then six in ADH is 18, and two times two is four, there's 38. There's your math. Is that pretty cool? Now, this part of them, so here, you got this on your website, too. You can take pictures, I'm going with that, too. Pictures are good. Now, I already told you that we've never seen that number in reality. So it's kind of like, I think I made a joke the other day, it would be like they go to church and they find five more. Commandments, you know, <laughs> Moses dropped a plate, you know. So, because I mean, this is like a holy grail of biology, but it doesn't seem to be the number of round probably realistic is 30 because a lot of leakage of hydrogen, I think. A lot of those electrons of hydrogen. But the guys who figured this out in the 70s won a Nobel Prize for this. For this, called, this is called chemoosmotic production ATP. Okay, and there's a better start in. So, there's your summary there. Show that again. So, that's pretty cool. Look, there's the two ATPs in glycolysis. And then look, all the ATPs made here, and then all the all the all the NADH is here, here pump hydrogens out, and if they come back in, we make lots of ATP. So one of my questions is, why do we need oxygen? All right, write this down. Oxygen is the final electron acceptor. Oxygen is the final electron acceptor in the electron transport chain in the mitochondria near your cellular respiration. Oxygen is the final electron receptor and the electron transport chain in state respiration of the mitochondria. I have been doing this question for about 25 years. Since I, I've been teaching lecture 30 years. I've had people go over to my boss, Brian. He said, all this people stuff. And I just asked them to ask them, and I, I told them, I made a five point question, right? Well, we need oxygen. And you would believe probably 50% of the people in the last 30 years leave that plant. But I just said it to you, right? Say it back to me. Come on, here we go. Oxygen is. No, 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 no. We'll do it like wedding. That's okay. Repeat after me. Oxygen is. Oxygen the bottom. The bottom. Electron acceptor. In the electron transport chain. In the body cavity. During cell respiration. And I promise to do everything my husband tells me to do. So help me God. No, I'm sorry. Let me get married. Sorry. We're doing the wedding vow there for a second. Okay, I want you to know that. Yes, ma'am. Did you say electron receptor or exit? Which one now? Final electron acceptor. So what that means, it receives the electron, right? That we started with, we pulled off that sugar molecule way back again. But now, but good point, a good question there. Okay, but here's the deal. The electron is like wow. Basically, what I see here, think of electrons as a rechargeable battery, right? Here the battery is empty, but when we broke it out of sugar, it was how it was fully charged. So every step of the way, every time that electron got transferred right here, look, here it is. Look, high energy electron on NAD. Let's get right there. Look, it got transferred to here. One, two, three. And by the time it gets here, it's got no energy. And we grab some oxygen, half an oxygen, I know, and we form water. If you go, look, now, now look, one of my favorite points of teaching. I had a young lady, and I knew her mother. Her mother worked here, a really good lady. But this girl had gone through a bad marriage and had a kid and was pregnant again. She just had a lot going on in her life. Had a little effort. Had slept by the month. So I try to be nice to people if I know stuff going on in your life. I do this in a night class with about 30 people in electoral, and I draw it all on the chalkboard on the board. I think I do a halfway decent job. She stands up, be like Ashton stepping up right now and just stand up and go away. That is the biggest waste of an hour of my blank and blank in life. You fat kid, blank blank. I don't give a blank about this. I want to be a nurse. And I said, you go home, fill that bathtub up, take that six month old, hold on that water, and call me in 10 minutes and tell me it's not important. You just killed your kids, so don't go home and do that. I just told you why you freaking breathe. I think that's important. I think that's for going home and telling my mother why I breathe, right? You learned something today, right? Now, is it easy? No, 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 no. I ain't saying it's easy. Did I get it first time I saw it? No, I did not. But you are going to be educated before you get through this class, right? You're going to know when you breathe. That is going to be on your test, right? We're going to ask you about oxygen, right? And, and, and when you breathe out, the carbon dioxide is the what? Waste gas, right? 
So we got a whole chapter on, on respiration we went over today. This is why. And I do think this should have been first so that you know about ATP, right? To do muscle contraction and all that. Right? We've been talking about ATP, but we really did, really did talk about where it comes from. There is a cure for all our energy crises on Earth right here. Because in photosynthesis, plants have a very similar electron transport chain. That's how they make sure energy to build sugar. So they make ATP, so they use it to build sugar. Pretty cool. What do you think? Y'all okay with that? I mean, that's the best I got. Okay, you can watch it over. I have another can be doing it on another time too, so maybe it's a little bit better. So the theoretical yield is 36, 38 ATP. There it is. There's our summary. Cyanide, they've all seen the movies when the secret agent eats cyanide to kill themselves. It stops the electron transport chain right here, calms this up, cytochrome oxidase, which is the name of this enzyme, and the whole thing dies and you die in just a few seconds. Yes, ma'am. So on the theory, Then we just said to me back. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's mine. Yeah. She found it on the review. That's good. Must be important now. No, nothing. Because when you said once that was called a dioxide, you said it was well, it's, the, it's what's left. Is that a sugar? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so the end of it's what's left of the sugar. Because remember that first law of dynamics, we can't watch. We can't make or destroy anything. In other words, I hate to break it to y'all, but there is no little magic pixel dust here in the body, right? Well, we get the magic, you know, like that little single barrel, you know, you know, it's magic, right? There is no magic. I'm sorry, I, I'm a magician. I actually didn't use your magic there. But that's just illusion. That's me faking it, right? I'm not tricking you, right? We have to account for everything in the body or that it's not real. I mean, see what I mean? In other words, everything equals out on that, right? That, that goes back to that first law of right? Great, good, good question. Good question. But for the citric acid cycle and all those, like we don't have to know the individual steps. You said just like we go to the. Well, maybe the big one. I wrote the big summary. Yeah, that big summary. Remember the NH for the citric acid cycle? What was it? That's fair enough. Hold on. I'll do it on one of them here. Here we go. All this. That's the product. Yeah. yeah. Six and ADH is two. If ADH is four, coming out that two ATP and a part six and a pair of three. I was thinking about it. I'm just saying, they don't. never heard that song. Y'all heard of Christmas, right? Y'all still do Christmas? I'm making sure. Okay, that's a famous little song on that. Every time I do this, it kind of makes me kind of rhyme some of this to me. But knowing what those are, it's easy to memorize. Remember, these are what? Energy transfer molecules, right? They're going to take those electrons that we're talking about through the electron transfer chain to pump all them hydrogens to make all this ATP. And then oxygen is the final electron acceptor. And then the carbon dioxide is what's left. Because it's low energy. Nothing, no, you'll never see an engine work on carbon dioxide. Okay. Now, oxygen is a different thing, right? There's power in oxygen, right? There's more buns than that, right? It's not. So, when you say is the thing with citric acid, it's not the question says where is it occurs in the mitochondria. So, it says, you know, where it says where does it occur? So, okay, where does the word is, where does the citric acid cycle occur? Uh, in the mitochondria matrix, yeah, in the mitochondria. Okay. And now, in the ETS, it's on these inner membranes in the mitochondria. On this inner membrane surface, on this inner membrane surface, see right here, it's just a double membrane. So, is God, is God traces also in the mitochondria? No, where did it occur? Oh my gosh. Wait, wait, I'm sorry, I missed. No, we went over five times. Here we go. It's okay. I, I still love you. Where did it occur? In the saddle uh, blood. That's okay. Yeah, I'm getting ready. I'm going to make this summary from here. There we go. So, we did we did fermentation in the saddle plasm and then, and also. But only do we get that transition reaction, approvate preparatory reaction. That one, number two, remember, occurs in the mitochondria as the specific acid cycle, as the for that term transport chain. Uh, let me, I may, we got a few minutes of being not to miss this chapter. And then we may, I got a little video I can show y'all. So why do we breathe, right? That gets back into that, right? To make ATP. Human body generates about 132 pounds of ATP a day. Obviously, you don't have that laying around, right? They say you have about six ounces in your body right now. But you make 132 pounds a day, man. You what? Always recycling ATP back to ATP. So we're always recycling ATP. Putting the phosphate back on it. Very interesting stuff there. I showed a little video of that. I think my help. Let me get this. Let me see what else we got. I think we got a little bit more in here. Okay, now I'm going to cut the chase here on this next part. And I have another question there that says, what about how do we get energy from other molecules? Now, look, for about $100, you can buy a piece of paper and unfold and cover up this whole wall. I should do that. And going right to the middle would be what? This, I mean, this is the piece of paper would be smell like pathway of all, all food on planet Earth. Okay. So everything humans can eat, 
can be written on one piece of paper to be like the whole wall on here. But running right through the middle is going to be what? Glycolysis going through what? Glycolysis, then the uh, preparatory reaction, right, in the mitochondria. And then that's okay. And the citric acid cycle in the mitochondria and electron transport chain in the mitochondria. And then fermentation can occur uh, out here in the, uh, in the cytoplasm. Now, look, the other two things we get energy from are what? Proteins and fats, right? What if I told you I've got 82 more slides to go? The guy's got two more chalkboards full of how we get energy out of sugar and protein. Well, guess what I'd be doing? I'd be lying to y'all. Look at that picture. What does that picture show? That all the fats that we can get energy from get shoved into what? Glycolysis, transition, or ETF. So we can fit all fats into what? Our master pathway, oh, glycolysis, preparatory transition reaction, citric acid cycle, ETF. All 20 amino acids can be what? Put into transition, citric acid cycle, or directly into, into the electron transport chain. Actually, not, they always go to citric acid cycle. So all the food that we get energy from, sugars, proteins, and fats, can be shoveled into our master pathway of life on Earth of glycolysis, preparatory transition reaction, magnesium chloride A, citric acid cycle, electron transport chain. That's pretty cool. So this gets shoveled into our main pathway. I've been talking about all morning. There is no special pathway. Proteins do have to have this amine group taken off. Remember that amine group? I already mentioned that in the here of the day. Remember? Look, that amine group in H2 has to be cut off, and we make urea, remember? Urine, right? And here's another one y'all may hear about fatty acids do beta oxidation, and you make, make them into NAD and FADH, and then that produces ketones. That's where you get ketones test. The fat metabolism will build to a ketone that has to be gotten rid of. Okay, other ones here. And uh, here we go. Anaerobic is going to show you uh, is how the liver can take sugars, fats, and turn them into, and we can, we can make the sugar out of anything, sugar, proteins, and fats, right? That's kind of cool. Liver does it all. Fatty liver problem. People have liver failure, probably due to obesity, alcohol poisoning, diabetes, drug, other drugs will kill the liver. They can't convert. And we can build almost all the amino acids. So sugars can be converted into fats, and fats is sugar is energy storage. Okay. Uh, nothing much here. Talks about insulin, how it works. I'm going to ask you a bunch of that. Fasting, there's a lot of dieting you can do there on that. Uh, metabolic rate is about energy you need uh, in your body at one time. We can measure all of our food. How do we get the calories off Diet Coke? They took a, a, a diet, an ounce of Diet Coke, put it in a kilometer, and it it with energy, with, with fire, and it, and it burned. So everything had energy and it will burn. We do this just so you take a peanut and lab and light it up, it'll have a little peanut torch for the minute. So then you can, then it's a kilometer, calculate how much energy is released. Okay, and you subtract it from the calories on the left, and what's left the peanut, and that tells you how much energy we get in. So we measure all our food has measurements on it. Your BMR is your basal metabolic rate, and that is the rate at which you burn energy. And as we already said, some of y'all that are like Ashton and some of the athletes in here, my ladies can run a lot, y'all have your metabolic rate running high. Okay, and then if you are older, it starts to slow down, right? And one of the big things that happens in women is when you have a couple of kids, it really screws the metabolic rate, right? Okay, and I, I mean, I know people who never seem to lose that weight again. It's really hard, right? But it does. So this is your, this is like your idol. When you crank a lot more, is it, or is it, you know, that is your metabolic rate can idle up and down. And exercise will raise it. Look at this. This is one of the saddest things in the book. Sit here and listen to the fat man talk. Y'all burn 100 calories this hour. If you've been on running on a treadmill, you could burn up to 800 calories this hour. If you're, and sometimes men burn more calories than women. Uh, look here, biking, rowing, dancing. I know a lot of kids that stay real thin in college because they're dancing and, 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 and eating and drinking like crazy. And, but but they're doing five hours of rows every night in the bar and in the club, right? Then you get then you then you stop doing that and get a real job. I'm like, oh my gosh, you put on some weight, right? Because you can't go out every night party. But even this, this is huge right here. A lot of people walk, start a diet. What you need to do is what? This is this is like an elliptical or jogging. This this gets you do an elliptical, they get shipping this on. You double, triple the calories per hour, right? So for me to lose 100 pounds, I'm gonna have to be far as walk the freaking to the, the, the Pacific Ocean. Okay. 
But if I jog an hour every day or whatever, then I could burn it a lot quicker. And what would there's only a couple of things will raise the BMR, exercise, a, a gain, system may as well. I think I'm going to tell y'all quickly here, but I never forget one of my favorite ones to teach this little girl. Asked me in classes. I know some of y'all, I don't know y'all's books because we got the mask on and we met once a week, right? But this little girl, we get to this and about with the drugs, and she says, Hey, it's okay and bad for me. And I'm like, Yes, it's bad, it's very addictive. And she said, Do I not look nice? And I'm like, Yes, you look very nice. I'm not lusting, I'm just, it's just fat. You are very doing your legs. I lost 30 pounds six months doing cocaine two or three times a week. I said, Okay, I would stop. Okay. Uh, she had a little boy that was giving her cocaine, okay? And after a while, one day he came to her and said, hey, go play with this guy before I give you your cocaine. And she did that. And she called me one Friday morning, fine. We well, know what that made her. You know what I told her? What I told her exactly what that made her. Not a pretty word, right? But this is what it is, right? She quit school, moved to another state. She's a teacher today. She's happily married with kids. She doesn't do drugs today. She gained 30 pounds within six months. Okay? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, so, I mean, I'm just saying, be careful, man. Be careful. Very dangerous. But anyway, but you can't raise it up. All these drugs that don't work, none of that stuff will speed you up. Uh, ephedrine and some of this other stuff, some peppers components will speed up the tablet a little bit. But the easiest thing to do is just go to the gym and work out. Okay. Uh, then for some reason, they want to put this into some random terms here on how we transfer energy radiation. I mean, think about it like neutral waste, but sitting there, the radiator, your heater is heat, radiant heat. So that's a way to transfer energy. Uh, conduction. Uh, is when you sit on a cold seat or hot seat. Convection is the way like I have a convection oven where you have a hot air cooking your meat, right? So I sit in front of a fan is convection and that cools you. Okay, and evaporation. Remember the time you did the, 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 the tequila shots on your belly button? Now cool that made your belly button feel? There you go. A rubbing alcohol, right? You're done, right? That, that, okay, pain no much movement. Ethanol, you get on your skin, it's like, oh, it's cold because that's evaporating, that cools your body. Anyway, a couple of terms here. I think that's about the end of the chapter. Then it kind of goes into a little thing on homeostasis that we're not going to worry about. And heat stroke. And oh my gosh, we didn't get the nutrition. So we got to go over that. So I'll just have to shoot that video for y'all. I think we have a little bit of this chapter, but I'll just do a video on that. Or go look at the one. I'll put the old one up and y'all can fix the last year. Okay. All right. We're going to stop. That's a lot. And I may try to show a video next time we meet. Okay. Because I have a video that I'll show in lab.